All right, welcome viewers. Today we have a topic which I want to uh, demonstrate uh, how we can be able to obtain um, uh, the maximum moment in a continuous uh, beam, uh, a continuous bridge. Now, at this point in time, we want to look at um, At this point in time, we want to look at uh, obtaining the moment at uh, a point along the bridge span. We have a three span bridge. Uh, we are looking at how we can be able to obtain moment at uh, a certain point K. Now, uh, from our previous video on influence line, we were able to obtain uh, the influence line diagram for a moment at that point of interest, which is point K. Uh, if you look through the description uh, box, you can find that video on influence line, uh, part one and two of that video. You can uh, watch it to have a better understanding on how to draw the influence line for continuous uh, bridge. All right. So now we have this uh, continuous bridge. We are just interested in uh, obtaining the moment at point K. Uh, point K, uh, for those of us who are joining the class for the first time, this is the point K, which is our point of interest. And that point K is uh, 4.493 meter away from this support. We call that this support support A. We call the point of interest K, which is this point. All right. Uh, now the span of this bridge, we have it to be from here down to here 10, from here down to here 20, while the last one uh, will have it to be 10, okay? So uh, if we intend to obtain the moment at point K, which is this particular point of interest, this point of interest, uh, we've gotten the influence line of K uh, from our video. Uh, so we've done that before. So we know that the ordinate at point K is 2.172. The ordinate at point K, 2.172. All right, so the next thing we want to try out is uh, to run the HB vehicle along this uh, influence line to know where uh, the maximum moment uh, will be located for point K. All right. Remember that our HB vehicle has a various configuration. Uh, we have, let's call this one as one, A1. Let's call this as a two, A2. Let's call this as a three, A3. And the last one as a four, A4. Now what we intend to do is to drive the vehicle from our left hand side down to our right hand side. And let's see where along the continuous beam we are going to have the maximum uh, sagging moment at point K. So remember, like, our point of interest is to obtain the maximum sagging moment at point K. Uh, now, uh, the code BS54901078 part 2, clause 3.25, uh, describe um, the influence line. I uh, will have. Uh, the positive part of our influence line is called the adverse effect. Uh, the negative part of our influence line is called the relieving effect. So in this diagram, we have the positive value for the ordinates on this point, negative value for ordinate on this point. So this point that has negative value is known as the relieving effect. Here we have this part of it and this other part of it to have a positive effect, a positive uh, adverse effect, which we call uh, uh, the positive uh, ordinates. Okay. So now we know this, we need to obtain the total effect. Now the total effect is the algebraic sum of uh, all the effects, be it positive or negative uh, ordinate or adverse effect or relieving effect. The summation of all of them will give us what we call the total effect. So if we are to look for the total effect at point K, uh, that effect will be that effect will be a sagging moment at point K. All right. So, but uh, 
we just need to drive the vehicle first of all but before we go let's start with uh, the first configuration of our hb vehicle which we have uh, as one as a two and between as a two and three we have it to be six meters that is the first configuration of our hb vehicle we'll try that out and look for the maximum sagging moment at point k okay now i'll start by driving from my left to my right so if i do that uh i would have loved to put my first axle at the point of maximum ordinate which is 2.17 which is this point but uh if i look for my ordinate if this wheel this as a comes here it means as a as a1 comes here it means as a2 will be somewhere here and if we look for the ordinates of the influence line we will have that if we substitute that to the expression this is the expression for the ordinate k the ordinate at k uh, in terms of k to a so you can check that out from the video so if you check from k to a the expression for the influence line this is a formula this is the expression plus 0 0.0 1131 x squared minus 0 0.0008 s3 minus 0 0.5184087 x and plus 2.17698 this is the expression for the influence line from k down to a we we remember we solve it from our right hand side to our left so this is the expression for the influence line so we know that uh, if we substitute the value of 1.8 from this point if we assume our k point to be zero and substitute 1.8 on this direction we are going to have the ordinate to be 1.2755 and if you check that compared to where when we fix the axle this this the second axle this way and first axle this way we have the ordinate at this point to be 1.350 so i think the best thing is to fix as a1 at this point where it is now why as a2 at the maximum uh, ordinates okay so if we do that we're going to have uh the effect this effect is going to be an adverse effect because it's on the positive ordinates all right so the adverse effect remember once we station the vehicle on this point uh, what is left from here down to the remaining part is six meters. I remember that um, from our K point to A, it's not up to six. So it means the second, the third as and the fourth as will be out of uh, the beam. So the maximum effect at this position, which is an adverse effect, is we're going to have 4P times 2.175 plus 4P times 1.35. That gives us 14.088 p kilonewton meters. So that's the moment at this at k when the vehicle is positioned at this point. All right. So we can't be too sure that this is the maximum moment at point k because um, the vehicle is still traveling. So with next position. We have to carefully think of uh, the next position where we can station this vehicle if we can have uh, another positive uh, effect or adverse effect. All right. Now, when this vehicle moves out of this point, the next possible point is that as a three comes, as a three comes on this point, while as a four comes on this point. Okay. And if that happens, it means we are going to have the vehicle moving towards what we call the relieving effect zone and that will give a reduction in the total effect okay well if we check that out you see that if you do that you are going to have a relieving effect here and that will affect the total moment of 10 at point k so we will not want to experiment with that because we already know the effect of that so that will not give us more that will not give us a moment that is even greater than uh, the moment we obtain in this first position, okay? So based on that, we must find a way out where we can drive this vehicle so that it doesn't uh, 
any of the axle doesn't fall on this relieving zone. Okay. What if we position as a three and four here? And we see if we can have the second configuration of HB vehicle. Remember that the HB vehicle will have a uh, six meters between as a three and two. We have 11 meters. We have 16 meters. We have 21 meters. We have 26 meters as the vehicle varies. So if we try, for instance, we try 11, you'll still find two axles falling into this relieving zone. If we try 21, of course, from here to here is 5.507. So if you put your axle here, you'll still find two axles falling into the relieving zone. Okay, but if we try 26, we will have the two azo, two azo on this relieving zone, why two azo, two azo on this adverse zone, sorry, and two azo on the other adverse zone. That will give us a good value for our positive uh, moment, all right, which is a sagging uh, moment at point K. So I think that is the best option we are going to try out. Now, if you look at the board, the ordinates at various points uh, have been able to work it out. Uh, you can see the maximum moment here has been solved before in our first video. Uh, that is 22.62 meter. From that end down to this point, we have the maximum ordinate, which is the, the relieving effect of 0 0.915. Uh, so if you want to experiment, you can just try the vehicle on this. You see the algebraic sum. Is going to be having uh, much smaller values for a moment at point K. And uh, that is not what we're interested in. Okay. So the next we do, let's try that vehicle when uh, we have the two hours on the other span and uh, the two hours on this span. So that will give us a much more bigger value for moment. Okay. I'm going to look at the next direction. So now in this case, now we've seen that the HP vehicle has. Uh, uh, we are trying the other dimension of the HB vehicle, which is 26 meters. So uh, we have from here uh, the uh, fourth and third axle will remain here. So let's call this one as a four and as a three. They are not here. So we have uh, as a one and as a, as a one and as a two. Uh, they are not here. So let's see where and how we can uh, obtain the values. Now, if we try to look for that uh, that coordinate, uh, we have um, we can have uh, here remains at two point one. So, if we take that value from the end, we will have uh, the so we have. The influence line we'll be interested in, in this case, will be uh, the influence, the ordinate at, uh, from here down, from here down to that point, we'll have it as uh, 26 plus um, 3.6, okay? So if we do that, that will give us a 29.6. So 29.6 from here, uh, we have the total, the total span from here down to here to be 35.507. Uh, so all we need to do is to minus that value from uh, 20, uh, the minus that value from uh, 20, uh, 29.6. Once we do that, we will have uh, the remain substitute that value into our expression so that we can obtain the ordinate at this point and as well obtain the ordinate at ASO2. All right, so now we are going to look at uh, the next one, which is um, ASO, when the ASO we already have here as our ASO number two, uh, we have here as our ASO one. So the next phase we want to look at, uh, now take note of the expression for a moment and this direction. Uh, we've gotten that expression from uh, our first uh, video. All right, so we can take a look at the expression for uh, this portion of the beam, which is from here to here. We have that expression here. 
So we can substitute values for it. Uh, the expression for this entire beam from point K down to point D. Remember, this is the expression. We have it on the board. Uh, at the top, there we have that. Uh, on this other portion of the beam, we have it from K down to A. All right, so now let's get the ordinate at uh, this point. All right, so now we are going to look at uh, the next one, which is uh, axle. When the axle we already have here as our axle number two, uh, we have here as our axle one. So the next phase we want to look at, uh, now take note of the expression for a moment and this direction. Uh, we've gotten that expression from uh, our first uh, video. So we can take a look at the expression for uh, this portion of the beam, which is from here to here. We have that expression here. So we can substitute values for it. Uh, the expression for this entire beam from point K down to point D. Remember, this is the expression. We have it on the board. Uh, at the top, there we have that uh, expression expression for the influence line at point K when taken from the right hand side D down to K. So from here, if you look at the expression, uh, the expression is Y. Uh, this is uh, Y. We have uh, minus 0 0.002794686 x raised to power 3 plus 0 0.027974x uh, that's now this part nine one five nine open bracket x minus ten close bracket raised to power three. Uh, once we add this expression to it, uh, the influence line ordinate will be applicable uh, to uh, CB. All right, applicable from D down to CB. Then the last part is BK, BK, which is uh, this short portion here. So we have the last expression, which is negative 0 0.0013985, open bracket, x minus uh, 30 or raised to the power 3. Okay, so this is the influence line expression from, for this beam from the point D down to this point K. So every ordinate that will be obtained uh, between point D down to K, we We'll be making use of this expression. Remember by Macaulay's principle, which we did explain in our first video, uh, once it's negative, we have it to be zero. Okay. So now for this other portion of the beam, K. Okay. And this other portion of the beam, we have it from K down to A. All right. So now let's get the ordinate at uh, this point. The total effect that we've uh, spoken of. Now we can see that uh, the maximum uh, effect obtained uh, when the load is on this config is positioned this way. We have uh, the maximum uh, or the total effect at point K to be 14.7296 P kilonewton meter, which is far greater than what we have when uh, we have at one and at two at these uh, points respectively. So the next. It is obvious that this will produce the maximum moment due to HP load on the, this point K. All right, now let's look at uh, that of uh, the UDL. Now the UDL, for us to have the maximum effect or the total effect on point K, we have to either position the UDL on span one, which is this span from A to B, on span A to B, so we can position the UDL here. Uh, if we position another UDL here, we are going to have uh, the total effects to be negative or to be far lesser than uh, expected, okay? Uh, so we won't come into the zone of uh, relieving effects. We are not going to put a load here. So, but the code allows us to put our knife edge load at any critical point. So, our knife edge load will be placed at this point, which is 2.172 ordinates. So, we're going to place our knife edge load here. And that is the highest point that the knife edge load can be. All right. So, we can place, place it there. But that of the UDL, we are going to 
place a UDL on this pan and this pan for us to have the maximum uh, effect. Okay, so now let's try that out. Uh, uh, look for that of a case. So we'll, we're going to have to load the first load case. It will be a case whereby we place the UDL on span AB or place the UDL on span uh, CD. So that will give us one load case. Now the second load case I'm going to consider case two is when we place only the UDL on span um, AB. All right, so let's check out the two load case, which of them will be critical for design. Now, if we do the first one, we're going to have uh, the UDL for a 10 meter span bridge. According to our code, we have it to be 71.83 kN meters. All right, so uh, that is the UDL. So that UDL will be multiplied by the area of uh, this uh, 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 shape. We've gotten it in our first video, so all we need to do is to bring out the value, which is 10.2. Uh, so if we multiply 10.2 by uh, that uh, 71.83, so uh, we're going to have it plus uh, the area of this place, this, this area is 0 0.7 uh, uh, meter square. So we add this area, this area times the UDL, which is 71.83. This area times the UDL here, which is 71.83. So we'll add it up. We're going to have the total moment to be seven, seven hundred and eighty-eight point six nine kilonewton meters. Okay, so this is most likely to give us the highest moment. But let's check for load case two. In uh, load case two, we are going to load only this span. Uh, so for load only that span, we are going to have that the maximum moment due to UDL will be seventy-one times the area of this shape, which is ten point two. That gives us seven hundred and thirty-eight point four. Now, with the UDL, the knife end load still remains at that point, so it becomes a 260.64 kN meters, okay? So we can conclude that uh, the maximum moment at point K due to UDL is 788.69 kN meter, which is the highest moment you can get uh, from the UDL, while that of a knife uh, edge load remains at that point, so that is 260.64 uh, kilonewton meters okay if you are joining us for the first time don't wait to hit the subscribe button i'll see you in our next class thank you very much for watching have a wonderful day